Uh, greetings, friends, and welcome to Tim Kirby Rush. I'm going to have to get used to the camera being over here. Uh, I sort of uh, redid things here. But anyways, uh, now is not the time to talk about uh, how I've organized my setup. Uh, now is the time to talk about um, the American Village Project, uh, because in the last live stream, I uh, sort of let loose all the information about the location in Istra, which was uh, interesting for some people, disappointing for others. But now we actually have a second location on offer, but with both locations, you need to act quick, okay? So, because a lot of people don't want to watch to the end of the video, um, if we do share screen, which I hope works, okay, here we go. Well, anyways, um, for the, this link is going to be in the description of this video, or I'm going to send it uh, very soon. In fact, I guess I can send it now, why not? But this uh, link um, is what you're going to need to fill out um, in order to actually do the whole American Village thing. And um, I just put that in the Tim Kirby Russia Hardcore. It does not have a description with it, which is kind of bad. That's okay. I'll add a description later when I'm not using my brain and mouth to talk. But anyways, if you can actually see this on the screen, which it's uh, reversed on my screen, which is terrible. Why did that happen? Why is it reversed? Hmm. Interesting. Why is it reversed? Oh, it's interesting. It's negative on the live stream, but positive on my screen interesting well anyways uh long story short uh you guys have till um saturday february 24th to actually put down at least 51 52 percent as you'll see written below uh, of the cost of the house to actually do this we will talk about that a bit later um but uh yeah the specifics of that but i wanted to say that at the beginning of the video before someone goes nah, uh, live streams i'm already bored i'm gonna click off this you know um, especially in the future. So anyways, again, I don't quite know where to look. I'm used to looking up here, but up there, there's now nothing because all my monitors and stuff have gone up. So, uh, but anyways, guys, so what do we have in terms of um, another offering? So in the previous live stream, we talked about uh, the big water at Istra, which is a, a pretty elite uh, dacha community where uh, there's already... Uh, people living they have been for like the last decade or so but there's like 20 plots left these plots of land are big they're half an acre which in russian would be 20 sotak uh which would be 2000 square meters uh for the rest of the world uh one of the kind of frustrating things is that since russia has its own sort of a unique system of measuring land uh, you have to kind of convert into three systems uh when talking to people across the world but so anyways the plots of land are big but because they're big, they're a little bit expensive. Um, and uh, ultimately, to put a house on them, uh, it's going to be uh, 16 million, a little over 16 million rubles. Okay? So we talked about that in the previous live stream. We showed uh, what that place looks like. And now let's uh, show what your other option is. Um, the uh, construction company sort of took it upon themselves to uh, go around and, um, uh, you know, find another alternative so anyways i don't know why on your screen this has been mirrored which is kind of weird i wonder if that's in the settings let's take a look at the settings let's see speakers microphone enable sound push to talk nope it's just mirrored just to be frustrating i wonder, i don't know why that's happening but anyways sorry guys uh you'll have to deal with things being backwards for unknown reasons but essentially uh this it's not where the red is okay now if you look here's here's so we're out in the uh Man, this is going to drive me nuts that it's reversed. But anyways, we're out in actually the east. It's west on your screen, but the east, northeast um, of Moscow. This place here where my mouse is is called Sholkova. It's the sh that comes from the top of your mouth, not the bottom of your mouth. So it is uh, spelled like Sholkova. Sh okay, uh, so Sholkova. You go that way and uh, go up the highway. And here you go. Uh, this place is called Litvinova. It's between Arlova and Litvinova. And so it's sort of this field where my mouse is making a big circle. I don't know. Can you still make drawings in uh, on Yandex? Mm, no. I guess that's from the old days. Uh, that's over. There is a ruler feature. So anyways, uh, let's roughly kind of show where this area is. So I guess it's going to be kind of... Come on. Well, it wants to be frustrating, but it's going to be kind of in this uh, zone here. So you got the lake, you're in between uh, two villages, which is nice. Again, it's going to be set up as a dacha community. If we go to the uh, sort of hybrid map, as it's called, uh, you can see uh, what everything looks like. In fact, you can already see uh, that construction has started um, over here. Okay. And because this village is called Arlova, 
What is Areol? It is an eagle. So uh, this uh, whole uh, project here is going to be called Arlovsky uh, in honor of uh, Eagle Village there up to the north uh, because it would be too confusing because uh, Litvinova means like Lithuanian town. Um, and that's um, uh, that's confusing. So uh, Eagle Village here, Arlovsky, and uh, this is all going to be built roughly um, on that territory. Uh, so anyways, one of the advantages that some people might see as an advantage, well, first off, it's cheaper. Uh, it's only, whereas the um, uh, Istra is a little over 16 million rubles, uh, this location, because it's slightly cheaper, is a little bit over uh, 14 million rubles, okay? So that's 2 million rubles in savings. And as the uh, general contractor, um, you know, developer guy, uh, sent me this image that essentially they'd be able to buy or if you guys are going to put money down uh, Buy uh, essentially a lot of homes that are right next to each other. Yes in Istra There is like a cluster of I think eight properties that are right next to each other But if people go crazy some people are gonna to have to be a little bit spread out. They're not necessarily gonna be like true neighbors um, Obviously everyone's gonna live within in Istra to be clear because people take things I say and tend to really jump and um, exaggerate them You will all live with in Istra at Big Water, you'll all live within walking distance of each other, 100%, okay? You just might not be next to each other. Whereas here, uh, it's all being built right now, and it's all for sale, and there's a nice big block uh, right uh, over there. So, yeah. So, and uh, this is what it looks like right now. Um, this is not uh, from our developer. This is other people building homes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so you can't see too much, uh, but uh, he sent me these kind of videos. Um, yeah, and in fact, these homes are actually look to be from the outside smaller uh, than what we are offering if he's going to show them. I think he does at some point. A lot of snow, as you can see. Um, yeah, so yeah, like that, that, that home in the background, I think is going to is actually noticeably smaller than what we're offering. But as you can see in Russia, uh, people are happy with living in uh, smaller sized homes, but these homes are definitely being built for winners. You can see they're made out of uh, standard size uh, concrete block with brick on the outside, so two layers, and uh, yeah, these are being definitely built for winter. Yeah, um, so they're pointing stuff out. Um, so this is kind of the environment. As you can see, there's some woods in the background. Um, yeah. And also today, remember, I'm going to answer everyone's questions because that's another thing. So that way people, because a lot of people jumped on this live stream when it first started. So we're going to definitely get to questions. But I just wanted to show you this video. Uh, let's see. Is there, was there anything in the other video that was any different or more interesting? Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. Let's see. It was just kind of all the same stuff because they're two different videos. Again, you can kind of see that uh, some other company is going in uh, and uh, building a lot of houses on this territory all pretty much. Uh, standard, as you can see, they're a very similar logic to the houses that we're offering, where you have uh, two walls, sort of east wall and west wall are just solid. You have south wall, presumably I would assume that's the south wall, uh, and that the street faces north-south. It's either the north or south wall has a lot more of the windows. That's very typical for Russia, um, and I hope that they're following that plan. Um, so you'll see a lot of that. Of course, this house has more windows, but the ones that face the street, <laughs> there's definitely more. So, uh, yeah. Why do they do that? Because it's cheaper to build that way. You put a lot of the stress on the two uh, walls that have uh, no windows. And everyone is happy. And it makes construction easier and faster. And, uh, yeah. Actually, this house looks pretty big. This one looks to have some extra meters attached to it with the extra windows and all that. But anyways, uh, this is what the Sholkova, or because it's easier to pronounce, the Arlovsky uh, project uh, looks like. And again, the Arlovsky project is 2 million rubles cheaper. So why is it 2 million rubles cheaper, you might be asking? And I think that's a valid question I just asked myself. Well, the thing is, is that uh, this uh, sort of a dacha community is going to be the kind where uh, it's going to require like drilling for water and having your own septic tank. So whereas in Istra, they have uh, like a, a an actual sewage system and water um, this one has everyone on their own individual property, has their own septic tank and their own water, and the pieces of property are also much smaller. Whereas the ones in Istra are half an acre and um, 20 sotka, these are, I believe he said, 7 sotka. So they are definitely smaller. So they're, uh, oh boy, let's see, uh, let's uh, convert. So let's see, so that's 700 meters squared to uh, acres. 
is 0 0.17, 0 0.17, so essentially a fifth of an acre, give or take. A sixth, a fifth of an acre, as opposed to being half an acre, okay? So, uh, anyways, um, yeah, and in fact, wow, this looks really high up in the sky right now. <laughs> Go down, camera. Go down. There's no reason to film the ugly whiteness above me. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's kind of that. Um, again, with some concerns about um, driving and stuff, this road is which one? This is the Alfrazinsko uh, Chasse. This is actually a highway over here, which you might think is a bad thing, but I think it's a good thing. This is the major um, Tskad, which is a huge a highway to go all over the Moscow region. Like here, maybe I should um, bring this back to the um, normal way that to do this yeah so you can see that there's like this big highway and it makes a big circle and uh, you can take this big highway and drive all the way down and take a left and then go to Chekhov <laughs> so uh, it brings me joy you can also go all the way around the other way and go right to Istra so that's where Istra is see um, so it's kind of cool you're by this I don't know how much traffic this place gets but as you can see um, just like within Istra the train station is farther I would have to assume since this is a chasse uh, beautiful French word that there have to be buses that run here. Uh, I haven't had the time to really research all this, uh, but again, uh, we have to move fast. Uh, now the clock is already ticking. As I've mentioned before, everything in Russia is hurry and wait. Uh, right now we're in the hurry phase. But this place here, uh, this little uh, blue uh, dot, it says the Fryazina uh, um, passenger train station. Uh, there are tons and tons of trains that go here, and it takes like 50 minutes or an hour to get downtown. So as you can see, uh, well, all the way downtown. As you can see, uh, you kind of take the train, and it goes through here, through Karolyov, Mitushi, and uh, down to the rest of Moscow. So, uh, yeah, a lot of trains go there. Uh, don't have to worry about that. And that's kind of what the area is. Uh, another thing that I don't think I've ever mentioned on a podcast before is if you see all the green on the map, why is it green? Not just because there's trees there, but everything that's green is essentially off limits. Um, there's sort of a, a, a rule or a law where, I'll put it this way, in the history of Russia, there have been plenty of stuff that has been built in the Moscow region, maybe questionably. But the one thing the government is militant about, and there's no amount of money that you could pay or no, no amount of palms you could grease or people you could manipulate to get any of this green area to be converted into living space. So for the future of what you're buying, you can see that there's only a certain amount that they can actually build here while you're still surrounded by a lot of green. So that's definitely a plus. If we go over to Istra... In fact, I think I have Istra already on the map, oh, don't I? Okay, if you go over to Istra, definitely over here there's a ton of green, but there's a little bit more here where they could potentially build stuff, although there's currently nothing there. But just something to think about, just something to think about. Um, uh, yeah, but then again, as you remember from Istra, you're right on the water. Oh my gosh. Go invest in a yacht. Okay? So, uh, again, now, uh, guys, I'm going to get to your questions, which, remember, if you're um, watching on Tim Kirby Russia Hardcore, which is the only place to watch, if you write a comment uh, under any post, it will go into what I call the chat, and that'll become visible to me. Uh, in fact, someone named Luna just tried to write something, but I think they didn't click on the uh, register button. You have to click on the button from the robot rose uh, in order to... Um, uh, to um, uh, actually make comments. Christopher says it's only mirrored on my screen and it looks normal on the stream. That is awesome. That is that is a that is a glorious, glorious thing. That makes me very happy that you guys are not having to read not only Russian, which may be confusing for some of you who are just starting, but reading it backwards. <laughs> so I'm very, very glad it's the right way um, uh, for you. So, uh, anyways, if you have any comments, write them. If you want to call in, uh, there's some sort of function. I forget what it looks like because the only show I've ever called into is Joaquin's show. And I did that like six months ago. So you can call in and talk to me. This would be a great time to ask any questions, but long story short. So we're going to go to this here and I'm going to have to read it off the improper, uh, screen. <laughs> uh, so that makes me look like I'm staring off into the distance, uh, because I want to read it uh, in the correct direction. So essentially this is the blank, the, uh, uh form, uh, that, uh, if you are going to do the American village. In January of 24, 24, you are ready to go and you are going to do this. You have to fill out this form. Why are we going to do this? Because a lot of people have told me they want to do the whole American Village thing, which is cool. But right now, the developer needs to either buy pieces of land 
or not buy pieces of land. They're the investors in all of this. Your buddy Tim, if I had millions and millions of rubles, I'd buy a bunch of land and slowly over time build a house, sell the house, build a house, sell the house. But unfortunately, I don't have money. Well, I do live a pretty decent middle class, upper middle class life, uh, you know, lifestyle, trust me. Um, I'm grateful, absolutely grateful for everything I have. William, I'll take your call very soon. Uh, I'm extremely grateful for what I have, but I do not have real estate investment levels of money. So what did the construction company tell me? And why are they um, putting us into some sort of like hurried situation? They said that for their plans for 2024, they need to, within two weeks, I'm giving you guys three weeks because I'm a good negotiator. They said two weeks. You got two or three, you got two or three weeks to, act, to actually put money down on either of these villages, be it the Istra village, be it the Arlovsky village. Um, well, it might be Arlovskaya would be better if it's village. But anyways, we'll get into pedantics later. So if you want to do it, then you got to put money down. And again, this is going to be the question, Tim, how can I do this? Uh, people within my life that I know have come forward who are, I now know someone who does money transfers. At the very least, I know one person who I trust who does money transfers. And I know another person who's actually pretty internet famous who wants to get into the business of helping people move in the physical sense, get their stuff from America to Russia. So we definitely have those pieces of the puzzle, which were a real pain for a lot of people, have fallen into place uh, thanks to me knowing a lot of people. One thing I'd also recommend, if you come to Russia, try to meet a lot of people. It'll definitely help you out. So uh, we have all the pieces of the puzzle together. The only thing is that if you want to do this, you want to do the American Village, and again, um, this is the only way you're getting through the damn migration quota, trust me. Christopher, I'll take your call and I'm done. Um, this is the only way you're getting through the damn migration quota. So here it is. This is the form. It is the easiest form ever. And if there's any trolls listening, uh, the thing is, even if there are a million troll answers, uh, I actually, this uh, program sort of allows you to kind of filter that out. So even if the trolls put 5,000 fake answers, I'll be able to filter through and find the actual ones. So... Uh, to my dear friends who watch this program and then shit on every post, um, you know, I'd, I'd rather take less time filtering through this, but if you try to fuck me over, it still won't really work out that well. So anyways, uh, here's question number one. So it says, I am dead serious about joining the American village. I am ready to either put money down on a home or fully pay for a home by Saturday, February 24th, 2024. And guys, this is one thing where if someone, you know, makes this promise and they push me to the edge and the real estate developer buys the land and this person doesn't come, guess who ultimately is going to have to pay for it? Don't fuck me. That's all I'm saying. Don't fuck me. All right. So I want to have my home in the following location. You can select Big Water. You know, that's in Istra, the Moscow region. The home costs 16,250,000 rubles full, par full price or to put 51% down to begin construction, 8,250,000 rubles. And of course, for some people who don't want the home to be turnkey, they want to do like the interior stuff themselves. That all brings down the price, but that's something to negotiate later, okay? So you'd still have to put 51% down because otherwise the company ain't going to start building. Uh, 51% down of the maximum price, I should say. The next option is the Arlovsky village in Sholkova County. Remember, Sholkova from the top of your mouth. Uh, that's in the Moscow region as well. For 14,250,000 uh, rubles for full price or 7,250,000 rubles for 52% down. So, uh, the option number three is that you didn't understand and for some reason you're filling out this form uh, improperly because guys this is for people who are ready to buy who are ready to put money down on building a life in russia and starting the migration process okay and i'm dead serious and it's okay if no one does it that's fine the only thing i ask you not to do is to say you're going to do this push this to the very end and then i have to tell the developer that no actually no one's going to do this okay don't make me look that'll make me look bad what would be the absolute worst is having the developer buy this and then you not come through and then I am fucked. I owe them uh, 2 million rubles, 4 million rubles, 4 million for Istra, probably 2 million for Sholkova. I didn't actually I didn't actually work out the cost. Well, it's a lot less than 4 million, but still. So, don't fuck me over. Uh, sorry for the swearing, guys. I know a lot of you are religious, but uh, unfortunately, your buddy Tim is kind of developing Tourette's over time, I think. Uh, uh, I really am having trouble controlling my... Uh, vulgarity 
Uh, so anyways, uh, that was so point number one. So let's just say someone wants big water. Boom. Uh, please provide your Telegram account. This is how we can contact you. We only use Telegram as a means of communication. This is just so when you enter this information, I know how to actually talk to you, okay? Um, and if you're already in my Telegram, that's awesome, okay? But just put your Telegram there. Do you have to worry about your name or whatever? Just put your Telegram. I know a lot of people want to protect their phone numbers, so that's why I said put your Telegram uh, because you can just sort of slide that in there. Uh, there shouldn't be data leaks because this is Yandex. It's a Russian thing. But even if the data is leaked, uh, losing you know your, your Telegram is, uh, let's just say, blockable. Um, so that's why I did it that way. And here, there's a checkbox you should check that says, I understand that the costs of the immigration support are separate as they are dependent on the number of family members that come with you. I really wanted to add this all into one lump sum, but, you know, if a single man comes by themselves, it's a lot less money than coming with, you know, four teenagers and a wife. So the applying for the migration quote is about $500 per person. That fluctuates with the value of the dollar, but that's roughly what it costs. And applying for temporary residency costs $1,000 um, per person. So another thing to pay attention, these are listed in dollars and the, the home prices are in rubles. About how to pay and all that, don't worry about that at this point. The main thing is for you to make this decision. You've got three weeks from the moment of this recording, okay? So we'll... Uh, uh, do that. Okay, now it's time to take calls and comments. So anyways, uh, Christopher wants to talk. Hello, Christopher. Excuse me a little. Uh, again, uh, forgive me. In fact, uh, yeah, I think the frame's okay. Uh, so hello, Christopher. Are you with us? Are you here? Are you not? I don't hear you. You probably have to click on yeah, uh, Christopher and Victoria. So there's two people. You have to unmute yourself. Remember, there's like a microphone I on your screen should... somewhere and you have to click it. There you I go. should be unmuted. Okay, there you are. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. okay, we've got, we can pay the 51%. Uh, mm -hmm. We still need to move money to Russia, but that's doable. All right. Well, if, if this is what you want to do, if this whole American Village concept works for you, and again, uh, these are much smaller, because remember, what was initially promised from the government was this huge piece of land, and you can basically take the land for free, and it'll become a giant community. Both of these places are small. East Thry has a maximum of 20 spots, unless some were sold over the last week. And uh, this place has, I think, a maximum of, uh, uh, is this place. Are you, excuse me. Arlovsky has uh, a maximum of like uh, 14 spots, I believe, if memory serves me. So again, just so you guys know what you're getting into. But the main thing is house in Russia, uh, in the Moscow region, access to the city, but not being in the city. And uh, you get into your you know legal support as part of the program. So there you go. Yeah, there's a, always a difference between people who pledge and people who actually pull the trigger. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. But this is actually the pull the trigger moment. That's why uh, I'm sorry exactly. I've been a little harsh with the language, but some people have to understand that this is not the time to do this time. Now, in the past, it's fine. You know, uh, send me your passport info, get on a waiting list, prove to the government people are interested in moving. That's moving here. That's fine. That, that was fine. Now it's not. It's not a game anymore. This is you're either coming this year. And uh, we need to, to, to get going on this business and actually get you a house, get this land bought, get it being developed so you can build a life here or not. It's 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 either do it or don't do it. There's no uh, in between because besides this, there's nothing on the horizon. Uh, I failed. Uh, well, maybe not failed permanently. I my initial attempts to renegotiate Sierpukov have failed. And it's like hiring another lawyer to go in and rewrite all this stuff. I'm running out of money here. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't know. So this is it for the beginning of 2024. Who knows what's going to happen? But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm more uh, concerned about not not enough people signing up than I am about running out of plots at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's, uh, of course, a real possibility. That That's also. And again, uh, what other people do, I can't guarantee. Well, I can't guarantee you the house and the whole immigration jazz. That I can guarantee you. Okay, I'll let you go. Oh, okay. Did you have any other questions? Nope, it all seems very, very straightforward. Thanks. All right. G very good. Then I'll uh, mute you again because you're all done. Anne wants to talk. Hello, Anne. Uh, I think the moment you raised your hand, I grabbed you. So uh, don't be... 
Don't be surprised. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you kind of uh, came right into where my mouse was, except I need to make you a little quieter because your microphone is actually very good. All right. Okay. So what was your question? Okay. okay well, congrats on everything. Um, Tim, well, can you review? Blah, 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 blah. No congrats yet. Nothing, is, nothing has been accomplished yet. <laughs> Hold your horses. But yes. Got it. Okay. Can can you re can you review just buying the land at this point rather than the house and building? Where does that stand? What's the scoop on that? Um, if you want me to buy you a piece of land in Russia, okay, uh, that's something you should just work out with me on an individual basis. Um, because well, what do you, what is what essentially happens with this whole with this this whole thing? is the whole concept of this is to create a community where like people want to live together, right? And if you sort of just buy the land, you essentially don't really say that you're going to come here. You, that doesn't get guaranteed. And you also then block someone from potentially participating. So if you just want to buy right. a piece... Hold on, hold on, hold on. So if you just want to like buy a piece of land in Russia for like your future, then we could just do that with... I could be like your real estate agent and we could do that. But in terms of like this, you know, that's that's kind of not exactly what we're we're looking for. Or I don't know. I mean, I guess, but no, good enough, good enough. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, just just think of it this way. It's like the whole real estate developer, and they put work into this, so they're gonna be like, okay, we found the spot for you, this, that, and the other, and then uh, they're actually not gonna make anything on it. It's like, you know, so, so, so something so, something to think about. If you want to just buy land in Russia, you give me a price, give me what your demands are, I'll tell you whether those demands are realistic or not, and we can go out and do it. And I can sign a contract where uh, my uh, LLC owns it at 51%, you own it at 49%, if it's the kind that foreign people can't buy. If it is the kind that foreign people can buy, then you don't have to worry about that. And essentially, but if it's the kind you can't, then uh, my holding or my uh, LLC holds it till you get citizenship, and then it's yours. What is yours? But forty nine percent until citizenship. That's one hundred percent. That's how that works. If that's what you're interested in. But uh, again, uh, I really need the specifics of like what you're looking for. All right. Thanks. Thanks All much. Right. Very good. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Because I know probably a lot of people might have questions. Well, there's a lot of people watching today, so I guess some people are interested in this. But, uh, yeah, so again, um, I should probably, um, <laughs> should probably look at the questions. Uh, we can put 51% down now, but still need, a, a move to move funds to Russia. Ask Christopher. Well, yeah, that's fine. Then that means, um, next week we'll do it. We'll, uh, uh, I'll have all the proper contracts drawn up. Uh, I have all the, the business stuff set up for all this and we'll, we'll get to that. So, yeah. So I'll talk to you then tomorrow or Monday. Again, uh, tomorrow is going to be another busy day. We have to wake up in the morning, and it just screws me over for the whole day. I hate the morning. But uh, anyways, so we definitely have you on the list. But regardless, uh, please, please, please fill out the form. That that would do just, just so that we have everyone in one place. That would be amazing. The gutter language does not equal blasphemy. No, well, it depends who you ask. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of Russians really get angry at me because I have a bit of a potty mouth. But again, I sort of see it as there's like Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. I think there's also Maslow's uh, hierarchy of Christianity, where I think that like, well, if we could get to the point where swearing is a major social problem, I think we've achieved basically utopia on earth. Um, let's see. Um, something about Brazilian tax laws. Okay, that does not have to do with this, although maybe that's interesting because Brazil is an interesting place. Um, okay. Um, someone else is typing. Um, yeah. So let's go back here. Does anyone else want to call in and, oh wait, uh, it's an effing serious topic and Tim's done a lot of effing work a lot. Oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that resident Bedouin. Um, so, well, it is. And also sometimes you have to kind of wake people up because, um, you know, um, I, well, one thing I guess I should, could share Well, since no one wants to call in or comment, I could tell one story where there is, uh, I can think of two or three particular people who have hounded me about this project for months. You're talking daily or maybe once every two or three days messaging. 
When? When are you going to do the American Village? Is there any news? When? 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 And of course, my usual response is, you know, I created a channel about this. If there's news in the channel, that's the news. If there's no other news, then I don't have any news for you. When, 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 over and over and over again, month after month after month, Tim, we'll get to you very soon, month after month after month, and you know, of all those, uh, let's just say two or two and a half people, because one person wasn't as intense, none of them have, you, since the moment we released the information already, throw, nothing, dead silence, absolute, so Tim, uh, yeah, let's uh, talk, uh, you and me, uh, about the this whole thing, hello? Tim, uh, you have to uh, turn on your microphone, I believe. And I appreciate that we share the same first name. That always brings me joy. You'll find a lot of people in Russia named Timur. They are our Islamic cousins. There, I hear something. I hear something, something moving. And I hope that's you. <laughs> or Can else you it's the bats again. Damn bats. Yeah, I hear you now. Great. Great, 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 great. great. Hey, hey, Tim. I uh, appreciate all your efforts. All this uh, yeah. couple questions for you. First of all, uh, the other day you did a YouTube video on this, and you were displaying a website and going on it. And <clears throat> excuse me, maybe I missed it, but yeah. um, uh, uh, can you give me that website so yeah, I can that, explore that? Um, well, the pro here's here's a big problem because the old man here is not exactly the um, hold on. Do, 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 this takes 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 a moment. I got to go through a lot of menus. Here it is. So it'll be. Um, let's see. How do I message you directly? Send message. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I just sent you a message directly. But here's the problem, Tim. Perfect. Is that I've only mm -hmm. had hold on. I've only had time to put information about Istra on there. Okay. So, because this thing with this uh, other thing, uh, the other village, the uh, Arlovsky uh, project, I only got the final info and video about that today. So you have to excuse me again. I'm one man. I have to work multiple jobs and I got kids and all that. So I apologize. Uh, that's kind of unprofessional and doesn't make the project look to look good. But on the site, there's really only general information and then inf information about um, this. Uh, and also the about how to share money and about how to move your stuff through people I know, that also is more of a recent revelation that hasn't made the site yet. So just a few things to think about, okay? So I apologize in advance for a lack of professionalism. I'll keep that in mind. Appreciate it. All right, man. Um, yep. i got a couple. Uh, uh, also, so is there any type of, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, assistance or plan in gaining employment or... Uh, do you just is are we up to our own? Uh, no, because this isn't a government thing. This is a whole private sector thing. So uh, maybe if the government was involved, maybe they could do something. But um, they have uh, given smiled a lot and um, offered a lot of things that are pretty. But ultimately, uh, it's kind of like you know, uh, it's kind of like you get invited out to dinner and then uh, they just give you a rice krispie treat on a plate. It's kind of been a lot yeah. of that. Um, and so, yeah, um, about getting a job, that's going to be on you. But I'll tell you, here's here's another thing then, Tim, that I can't tell you because of some recent conversations I've had with people. The number one thing you need to get a job is to learn Russian well. Yeah. If you, like if you come here and you get in, stuck in this phase where you're, you're at first someone might be on, well, you've got to be on visas. And then they go to the whole of filing for temporary residency. You're going to be stuck in this weird realm for a couple months or more. Uh, where you can't legally work. Some people do, but again, I can't advocate doing that because that'd be a crime in the Russian Federation, and I don't want my citizenship revoked, okay? So uh, some people do what they do. But um, I can tell you that um, during that time, it's going to be essentially a dead time. You know, maybe you have children or something. That, that doesn't matter. You know, children do take a lot of time. up. But during that phase, Russian, every yeah. day with a book or videos or try to hire some local teacher from the local school you'd be amazed how uh how little they might actually want to tutor you but you have to go uh, in a, a, a gonzo uh you know there's that what is that guy dave ramsey says he you have to have you have to have gazelle intention you got to have that gazelle desire i don't quite know what he means by that because gazelles run away from everything 
<laughs> but uh, you have to have that, like, you have to have that intensity. That, like I say, it's like a fumble in uh, the NFL, in a pro American football game. The ball hits the ground, yeah. you've got to be the first to get it. And that's your, it has to be your attitude. Because if you don't learn to speak Russian well, you will never become successful. I've met one person in Russia who is successful and lives a very nice life financially who speaks Russian terribly. One of mm. all the foreign people here. You got to do it. Yeah. So that's uh, to get a job. You have to learn how to speak Russian because whatever you you could do, whatever your skill set is, it is worthless if you don't speak Russian five or six out of ten. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I just to get my foot in the door, I wouldn't mind just being like a low level farm hand or something, you know, uh, but anyway. Yeah. Well, um, see, the thing is, it kind of depends where you're going. It kind of depends on the farm. So, for example, in Istra, uh, there, there's a guy who produces cheese and his name is Oleg Sirata. I could get in a hold of him. I'm sure I could get his phone number through people I know, but I don't know how many people he can employ. Or maybe he'd just be like, no. <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. don't know. So I do know one farmer in the Istra area. I don't know anybody in the Shulkov area. I know, like, nobody. So, yeah. Um, but farm- and last question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, but uh, farmhand, I mean, there definitely is, uh, outside of Moscow, It is it is rural enough. But again, uh, is it's kind of like I'm not quite sure if there's a whole huge market. Like if you were in the middle of nowhere, there'd be a lot more work at a farm. But at the same time, if you were in the middle of nowhere, the salary would be dismal. So it's like I don't know. I can't promise you anything. Yeah. That but yes, some other questions. Uh, just last one. Uh, what about citizenship? I've looked into it a little bit. I know, like you said, learning Russian is a big part of it uh yep. is there some sort of path or anything like that or is it the same type of situation with the employment as far as gaining citizenship well with the well with the employment if things haven't changed so again from going from visa to temporary residency you're in the worst position ever uh when you go from temporary residency to permanent residency that's when you get in a position where you're allowed to work uh one white salary job in the state where you're uh you know applying to live which is still not the best terms because a lot of times people don't want to hire uh people to work a white salary job because then they have to pay the social security and uh, maybe take care of medical and all that stuff so it's a little bit hard but it's it's a lot more it's already more doable okay it's already way more doable especially if you can tolerate teaching english then you get to the point where you're when you're at permanent residency and when you hit that moment you can work like a russian does and do all the same stuff okay Open your own business or work for yourself uh, and pay 4% taxes. And all, well, Yeah, I think you can do that when you're in permanent residency. But anyways, you basically get all the work rights of Russians, and then you can just do whatever you want, and that's really good. Uh, but with the, the citizenship test, yeah, being a citizen definitely has a lot of benefits, and it's something you will really need to do, especially, you know, if you're going to own property in Russia, you should really have Russian citizenship. I'll tell you that much. Uh, having property in a country where you don't have citizenship is a recipe for disaster over the over an extremely long term. Uh, so there's a, some kind of crisis. Um, but uh, the citizenship test, uh, Russian, the language test on the, on the for Russian citizenship is insanely easy. Okay. Oh, no. So if you put that as your bar and you're like, awesome, I passed that test. That means I can work in Russia. No, it doesn't. That's like, mm. that is literally of, like I said, on a 10 point scale. I think you need to be to work in Russia. You have to be at a, like a level six out of 10. The test is maybe level two, level three of difficulty. I mean, it is okay. like, it is like a, you know, I don't know how to do it. Like in English should be like, uh, yes, uh, I, India, India, look, I come India to America. I want work uh, now. It's like that, that's the level of uh, of uh, Russian that you need to get through uh, the citizenship test. And that's not going to get you a job. Um, <laughs> that's probably not even going to get you a job at a farm. Because they're going to need you to be able to, like, you know, uh, freaking, you know, the guy's going to be like, okay, I'm going to need you to go milk the cows. Yeah, Hey, guess what verb doesn't come up very often? Milking. Because in English, it's based on the word for milk. In Russian, it's not connected to the word for milk at all. And that word changes forms, depending on the way the language works. So there's dait might be something more abstract because that's the infinitive. Doi karovu blah. That's you know you got to milk the cow right now. And dait mm. becomes doi if you need to do it right now and it's an order. So you see you have to 
learn the system of the language or even basic stuff like go milk the cow, something like a very primitive concept becomes difficult and maybe you won't be worth employing. Yeah, I get it. Mm. All right, I did think of one more. So, so I'm in Texas. I got one more question. I'm in Texas, yeah, yeah, hot climate. What did you do today? I, I actually put the live stream for being two hours long because I know people have questions. I want this to be question mania. So keep asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm hot climate, and so it's you know Russia cold. Uh, what is the furthest south, southern American village that you are that's in the works? There's nothing in the works but these two options, and they're both slightly north of Moscow. Uh, if you look at it like okay. a line, everything that isn't related to this, well, except of course, Bashkortostan, I probably has a really good would have a really good chance of succeeding. The thing is, is that with Bashkortostan, it's a lot easier to get people into the Moscow region. Uh, Bashkortostan is something that maybe would be something to do in the future, but I think a lot of people psychologically aren't ready for it. Because with, okay, with Moscow, you can, um, at any point in time, because here's, here's another thing. I'm not an emotional person, or at least I shouldn't be uh, in my old age. And there are a lot of foreign people I meet, and they're like, don't you ever get depressed and just want to, like, go talk to someone else who speaks English or maybe go to a Starbucks? No, I don't. <laughs> okay? But you have to have that kind of mentality. Because if you go to Bashkortostan, which is a beautiful place, by the way, you know, besides the other people in the American village, that's it. Okay, that you you're the only you'd be the only people there, and so you it's it's basically really also really far away from a lot of that like you know city life stuff, and so I'm kind of afraid to start with it. You have to be much more hardcore to 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 go out there. Like you have to be hardcore into this kind of thing. And I think a lot of people aren't. Uh, this is more like a suburban, semi-rural thing where if you get in the mood, you can jump on a train and uh, get whatever you want, you know. Uh, or like yeah. I mentioned, uh, the Istra, I saw that people were having their groceries delivered. So it's like, I live by the big water and the pretty uh, outside the city in a rural environment. Beep, beep, boop, boop on my telephone and here comes uh, my groceries. You see? Civilized. I yeah. think that's the word you're... I, yeah, I, civilized I, versus uncivilized. Yeah, I think people talk a big game about oh, I want to come to Russia. I want to build my own house. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I think the amount of people want to do that is very slim. That's me and Father Joseph, and that's about it. <laughs> so, anyways, if that's all, right, Tim, I'd like to move on to someone else. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, all the best, man. Uh, we're going back to Christopher and Victoria because they have some more, and then we'll go on to uh, Daniel, also known as Moscow Settlers. Um. Yeah. Hello. What's sitting Hello? here? Uh. Yes, Christopher. Okay. Uh, yes, Christopher. I hear myself. I hear myself. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. You hear me? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. Oh. Very nice. Uh. <clears throat> praise be Jesus Christ. Uh. And uh. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the yeah. joke about the Tourette's. <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, uh, to be honest. Uh, Oh, 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 I need to, to, uh oh, yeah, right, I need to turn off my, uh, oh, darn, how do I turn my speakerphone yeah. thing off? Um, oh, oh, goodness, I don't even know how to do that. Uh, I'm one of those bad talk show host people, uh, Colin, call people, you, uh, talk, I'm on. you talk, ask a question, okay. I will answer it. Uh, oh, 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 okay, um... Gosh, I've never done this before. Uh, so, so I should, forgive me, you, uh, tell me, I don't understand. Just ask any question. Oh, okay, okay. Um, um, so uh, I uh, come uh, from originally from Washington, D.C. area, uh, Fairfax County, uh, suburb, uh, yeah, and uh, my grandparents uh, bought a plot of land and uh, had uh, bad septic problems. This is the early 1980s. There's was a real estate boom. The property was probably worth a, a million dollars by the time it was finally sold. But then I think they fixed the problem, but it took like 25 years. And uh, in my uh, uh, short time I've lived in Russia, I've uh, become very aware, even with some rather affluent uh, long-term residents in uh, suburbs of Moscow, one of the friends of mine, an absolutely amazing people, amazing home, and they had a... I don't know, a month or something, they have like no, no operating septic field and things. So I, I really see, uh, in many of the dachas, just terrible, terrible septic systems. I'm almost just can't believe that situation. 
Um, what could you tell people? Define this. What do you mean by terrible? Like what? They just don't work at all, or what? Okay. Um. Well, in the United States, I'm accustomed uh, to maybe your average. Uh, okay, there's lots of variation, but when you have a tank that needs uh, to be pumped out or whatever, that it, maybe you, you wait three years, four years, five years, six, seven years, something like that. But I see in some cases in the countryside, uh, sometimes they, they expect to have it pumped once a month, once every two weeks, things where I just can't believe it. I'm like, come on. This is this is crazy stuff. How's the septic system with uh, what? What's the uh, situation? What 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 should be expected of people for their? You, you, it's you just septic and utilities. In you need to throw the air and actually here. Now I have to, I have to mute you a bit. I'll, I'll unmute you when I'm done. Uh, so in Istra, they actually have like an actual sewage system. So it's sort of like one big system that takes all of the uh, wastewater from all the homes and leaches it into sort of like one big septic. It essentially works the same way as like uh, city water does. Uh, this other place, uh, Arlovsky, this will have, you'll have your own individual septic tank. And we'll show you that before we buy it. In fact, uh, the um, developer's putting together the big list of all the stuff that's actually going to be in the home, everything that he's going to buy. So you're seeing what you're getting, uh, especially we make the contract. So that way, you know, you're uh, paying for you. See, you basically you see the list of the stuff we're going to get. And we're not going to be able to then switch septic tanks on you to get the El Cheapo one. Now, one thing I've noticed is that um, people one thing is why do people get them pumped uh, often? Because it costs 30 bucks or less. Uh, that's one reason. Um, number two is because a lot of people in Russia, uh, the, the septic tanks are designed to leach. You're supposed to leach on your own uh, territory there. So they're not supposed to hold something for years upon years upon years. Um, you're supposed to leach it out. Um, they also, uh, a lot of people use um, bacteria to sort of uh, break down their septic tank. Um, like with mine, um, I don't really have to do very much because I leach. So I don't really have to have someone come and like do anything with it. Um, so yeah, uh, the whole leaching um, is usually the way it goes. But uh yeah, well, one thing I can tell you is that you don't want to save too much money on your septic tank because uh, then you get a lot of um, problems. But, uh, yeah, and one of the things about Russians in general is no one cares. So that's, remember, you have to have the no one cares factor is uh, very, very important um, in everything. So we're going to try to get, because uh, the builders want to get good septic tanks. Um, I don't know, um, but um, leaching is the simple solution. If you leach, then you don't really need... Uh, but then again, this is what you guys want, not so much what I want. Um, you don't have to worry too much. So anyways, where were you, Christopher? You are back on. Uh, did you have any more questions? You're back on the air, but you're um, free to speak, especially if you, I think you have to click your microphone again, though. Oh, okay. Uh, th thank you. Um, well, I guess that's, that's comforting. It sounds as if it's going to be an experience where it's not going to be um, too much of an effort too often, uh, as in a person could go over a year without worrying about it, which is, well, I think that's kind of the, the normal rule most people are accustomed to uh, in the United mm -hmm. States. And I would think in, in Moscow area, too, like that's not, that's pretty normal. So, yeah. so that sounds very good. Well, I can yeah. tell you for a fact, well, so tell you for someone else oh, I you because that reverb is brutal. But anyways, um, uh, sort of the answer is I have the worst septic setup there is. Okay. So I can tell you what the absolute worst setup looks like. It is uh, a set of um, um, like concrete rings that are in the ground and the, the wastewater goes into the first ring and then it sort of goes through the sort of filter pipe into the second ring. And from the second ring, you take that gray water and you leach it and you leach it back onto your territory there uh, onto some gravel, a sort of like gravel pit. And uh, there you go. <laughs> That's where all the water goes. And then after a very, very, very long amount of time, um, the more solid uh, waste, uh, as we should call it, if the bacteria doesn't eat it up, then you have to call the suck, tru tru suck truck to come for $30 and uh, suck it all up. And then you're back to square one. I would say that that happens once every six months or a year. Yeah, I guess maybe six months or a year, kind of depending. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's what the absolute worst 
absolute cheapest way of doing it looks like. And uh, to be honest, it's not that bad. You know, maybe if you were someone who had a family with, you know, 10 kids or something, you might be like, uh, this is going to kind of driving me nuts. But, uh, you know, if you have, uh, I would say if you probably live with like four or less people, uh, you'd probably have the same thing. So that's my personal experience. It is uh, not a problem, but you know, because again, cause I have the absolute worst setup. That means, uh, every time something has to be done with getting the wastewater out, I have to do it. It's not automatic. Uh, a lot of people I know, uh, in fact, almost everyone I know has an automatic setup, so they don't have to do that idiocy. Welly, you wanted to talk. Welly, are you ready to talk? You kind of put your hand down. Welly? Hello? Are you interested in talking or not? It's fine if you want. Hello? Hello, you're there. Okay, fantastic. Hello, Welly. Hello, Ag. How you doing? Good. Good, good, yeah. So I just wanted to run a few questions by you. Yeah. Um... Is it worth sending children to private schools in Russia? I've heard the public ones you said are, are fairly good, but if one has the means, is it is it something worth doing? Well, the question is about the means. Is like, is it is it the okay? Put this way, is it worth making a major sacrifice for? Is this the kind of thing where you're going to work a second job and uh, destroy your nerves and your health for the future of your children to send them to private school? I would say no. Mm -hmm. If, say, for example, I don't know what your, your income is, but let's just say you you were able to, in Russia, make 500,000 rubles a month, a very healthy amount of money, okay, that most people would uh, dream of, uh, something like your, 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 your upper middle class. Yeah, I mean, why not? If uh, I forget, what does a private school cost a month? Like 30,000 oh, rubles, 50,000, something like that? Basically, if you were making, uh, if you could spend maybe 10% of your income on that or less per kid, you have two or three kids, and yeah, maybe yeah. it probably really would be worth it because then you're definitely getting a, a good education. You're definitely going to be in your kids are going to be in a good environment and any people who are badly behaved are given the boot. I would say, yeah, it'd be worth it. But would it be worth paying 70% of your income or 80% of your income or something ridiculous? No, no, it's just, yeah. no, I, I don't, I don't see that. Okay. And what, what are some good ones to look into near Moscow, do you think, if one, you know, if you... Uh, people the just... one... Oh, my gosh. It's Saint something. It's the only one I know is really good. Okay, hold on. We've got to uh, do a little bit of adjustment here. So we need to do what? I need... Whoop. I need this, and I need this, Same and I need to go back. Uh, Gim... Is St. Mary's Parish? Uh, this one might take a little while. Where's the one by in Aprilivka? Th this one, Gymnasia uh, Svetitelia Vasilia Velikova. So, Vasily the Great's um, gymnasium or whatever they will be the, the, the term. Uh, this one, yeah. um, I've, I've heard really good things about, and I know people are involved in it, and they really do care. Um, but like the problem is, is usually most of the gymnasi are private, but not always. So the thing is, watch if we zoom out here, let's see what is you see, you see on the map how there's kind of a lot of dots. And that's the problem where a lot of these are like here, uh, like here's another one, uh, Eastern Orthodox classical, uh, gymnasium in the name of the icon of, um, uh, basically the, the, the Theotokos Virgin Mary. Her sure. banner. Mm -hmm. Is that Armenia? Or is that one that I think that is? Anyways, uh, a lot of these more older words are harder for me to translate. But so, anyways, like there's so there's a lot of them, and it's kind of hard to say. So, like, which ones are private, which ones aren't? Uh, you're you'd have to kind of do your own research on that. All, besides that one by the airport, uh, Domodedovo Airport. Uh, besides that mm -hmm. one, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. So, um, that's okay. Yeah, that's my kids okay. go to private can... school. If you want to talk about that, my kids go to private school. I don't have the uh, uh, big money resources um, for that. Yeah, I thought there's a lot of variation. Like they have those like overly priced like British expat kind of ones for people that are earning like a million dollar bucks a year that can just so they learn well, English I mean, as well. If you, you feel, know, there's... if you feel that because I will yeah. tell you one thing is that if my kids didn't mm. spend a lot of summers in America, they wouldn't speak English at all. 
Okay. So if you okay. really want to maintain their level of English and, uh, mm. um, it, it actually really could be, to be honest, uh, mm. maybe, maybe even worth it. But then again, remember sure. who the hell are the teachers at these places? Like, uh, who are they? Are they just mm. like weird expats who, uh, need some kind of job and then go out and get drunk every day after school and regret coming to a country they can't escape anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> because because they built a career here and they're stuck here, so I I don't know, man. Uh, I don't quite know how that whole vibe works out. But if you're talking about okay. thousands of dollars a month, I, I just I just don't uh, see the value of that. Um, we one no, thing I, that we are going to do yeah. to try to help people. We can't help people with work, but we have uh, with the Mo the Moscow government. They have promised to help with the whole education thing. And again, this is another reason why do an American village. Tim, why don't you just help people buy houses? Why not just have people buy houses? Because if people just buy houses, they can't get through the migration bureaucracy. Mm. But what else? What what else can't they do as well? Uh, they can't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, get help from the government to maybe organize something special. Because if there's like six or seven kids with a similar problem, it's a lot easier to get the government to do something about it as opposed to one kid. You see? Sure. There yeah. You go. Okay, I've just got a few more. I don't want to take up lots of time. No, it's okay. That's what we're here for today. Okay, what do you wish? Uh, is there anything you wish you, you could have in Russia that you, you can get like in the US? Like quality stuff that you wish you'd have like you buy over there or, uh, you know, that doesn't you can't get in Russia. French is mustard. Okay, right. Like okay. There, there, that um, really doesn't exist. You can get everything you want, dude. Okay, uh, sure. I thought, uh, you know, because I play American football, I needed a new pair of gloves for this season. I ordered American football gloves here, and they're the best I've ever had. So it's like, okay, you know, there is no money. Okay. That's not a thing. But uh, Yeah, it's I'll just if there's what, anything worth for some people buying. Uh, mm -hmm. Lenses. Camera lenses are oh, okay. very difficult to get because um, there's very few fake lenses or whatever. Basically, if you have a Nikon camera from Japan, then it has to have the mm -hmm. specific Nikon lens that costs hundreds of dollars specifically from yeah, yeah. Japan for it. There's no like Chinese alternative. Uh, so a lot mm -hmm. of people say uh, stuff related to ca like high end cameras are a big pain in the butt right now. Sure. Oh. Okay, like I was just thinking, perhaps one of the kind of unsaid things that could be a bit of concern for people wishing to move to Russia would be um, the potentiality to be conscripted upon obtaining citizenship, and then what that would entail um, if things were to escalate geopolitically. Let's say, what, what you know is, is you know what's the what would you say to expats that you know, would, would want to be property owners that would want to, you know, well, that would be kind of have those kind of concerns. As someone who really mm -hmm. doesn't want to die in a war, uh, I can still mm -hmm. say that if you want to come here, you learn mm -hmm. Russian and if the time, if the time comes, then so be it. Cause like, okay, you want to come to Russia, mm -hmm. you don't want to learn Russian and you won't uh, do even file for military service, then go fuck yourself. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Don't come here then. Like, yeah, you know, it's, like it's, we can't, we can't mm. do this whole thing where it's like, I want all the benefits of something and none of the minuses. So because I have citizenship, you know, my name's on the same list. I got my draft notice. I went there and I said, but, but what, what are we going to do? They gave me 5 million medical mm. tests. I just told them, put me down as healthy. Because mm. I'm not going to do this fucking medical shit. It'll take months of my time. Mm. I, I need money, not, not yeah. to do, do their bureaucracy. So that's it. Uh, yeah. Basically, if you're over 50 years old, you can't do anything. Uh, in the past, it was mm -hmm. 27, where you had to do your mandatory year of military service. I believe it's 30. So if you're 30 years old mm -hmm. or over, uh, when you get Russian citizenship, you won't have to do any of that um, nonsense uh, of, uh, you know, having to spend a year of your life in the army. You don't have to yeah. do any of that. So, yeah. I suppose it could just feel, feel overwhelming to people that, um, you know, perhaps won't have nailed the language and then kind of obviously still have family on the other side and... There's a lot of other dynamics at well, play yeah, there, well, but I kind of I do get your point as well. It's yeah, very, it's well, legit, well, like so. the thing is, is well, what do well, a lot of people mm -hmm. do? What do they What do they do? Uh, a lot of men who mm -hmm. are age 18 to 30 now it used to be 27, so the window is shorter. 18 to 30, mm -hmm. what they do is they just do a permanent residency over and over and over again until they hit their 30th birthday. Okay. So that's that's kind of a okay. real simple solution because they're never going to yeah. draft foreign people. That's not possible. That's fantasy stuff that they're going to write on, like, uh, in the Western media that Russians, they're grabbing up foreign people. So, uh, yeah, and that's uh, how people 
get out of the whole thing. Um, so, yeah. Sure. And also, of course, um, if someone were to have some sort of, uh, I don't know, missing a finger or they have horrible arthritis or whatever, uh, you know, uh, they uh, might be sort of disqualified from military service. Uh, so, okay. so like, uh, I'll keep a lookout for the stream, expats that If you're really fingers. concerned about that, I did a live stream recently, which you can find on any of my channels, be it on YouTube or Rumble or Bitch, maybe not Bitch Shoot because Bitch Shoot is lame. Uh, it always, it's hard to upload, but Bitch or Rumble on YouTube uh, about how yeah. it was part of an army reality show and what that looks like from the inside. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like one of these things where uh, being in the military is the absolute last thing in the world I'd want to do. But, uh, you know, for example, I would have, if it were real, I would have been rejected because I, I didn't mention this in the video, but I guess we should be honest. I had a skin problem at the time and they wouldn't let, at first they didn't want me to even participate in the TV show because I had a skin problem they considered to be contagious. And then the other thing is I couldn't pass the psych, the psych test. So, okay, you know, so there's okay. stuff like that. Uh, like if you really have the same sort of mindset I do, it's clear you're not geared for the military and they're like, go do something else. So, uh, yeah. So if you have some sort of okay. horrible mental or health or uh, physical problems, uh, you'll get out of it. Okay. Last one. Then I'm, I don't want to occupy any more of uh, yeah. everyone's time, but I hope the questions have been interesting for people. Um, what, what do you think about having a, a paid group for people that are serious about moving to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff? So, because for example, if I'm going to move, to, if anyone's going to, move to a, a village, they could be a bit trepidatious about who they're going to be with in the village. And perhaps if there were other people that they could speak with and, you know, get to know each other, uh, you know, in well, this yeah, kind well, of... That was kind of the whole point of me put, putting up the group about the, the American villages were for people to sort of talk to each other. But yeah, making it like sure. a little internal group or something, that's fine. But about being trepidatious. If you are the... Remember, this is the Western mentality and how Western people are very different from Russians. Okay, so what yeah. you said is ultra-Western. Well, what if maybe some people around me, I don't like them? Russians <laughs> would never even think about that. Okay? Sure. And if you're going to come here... Like, dude, if you're going to come here for the things about, like, the whole being free from the LGBT and uh, being free from wokeness and uh, being able to live in this uh, nice place where there's, like, no crime and all this stuff. If you're coming here for that, so you have one neighbor who's a cunt. Who fucking cares? The it, Like, the sure. place, you know, I live at, the guy who actually, the our, like, the head of the homeowners association, I'd like to rip his guts out and shove him right up his ass. And I've told him that. I hate that fucker. So what? Mm. Yeah. Because Russia's different. In in America, if your homeowners association um hates you, there's all sorts of things that they can fine you for. Here it's like uh he's she's tried to do stuff in the past. It's like my lawyers can beat your ass and he is a lawyer. You can't do shit. You know, because the way the laws are written, uh, federal laws dominate over any agreement or whatever you make. So who cares? Just because I really don't like the the guy who's the homeowners association, there's a couple other neighbors I don't particularly love either. So what? Sure. I have a two meter high fence. I don't even see him. Yeah, it, maybe it's just like you got the multiple plots, haven't you? And if say you know Orthodox wanted to, they wanted to, Orthodox Christians wanted to get together on one plot, and some of the you know the other people wanted to get together on another plot. I don't know. I don't know, right? I'm just. That's how people think, isn't it? Herd mentality, right? But I am with you. you know? Kind of, but no, but then you get into this thing where you start to then, all of a sudden you take the amount of people who are interested in something, which isn't that many, and you start to divide them into these interest categories. And again, you, you again, this is another oh. thing that a lot of people have trouble with, is what is the point of doing this? Okay, why, why do you want to move to Russia? What's the point? Why bother? Is that a question to me? That's to you, yeah. Because I don't think there's anyone anywhere else I'd rather raise my children. Good. Then who gives a shit who your neighbors are? Who gives sure. a shit if maybe sometimes your septic tank has to be uh, unloaded once every six months to a year as opposed to seven years? If you believe that this is awesome for the future of your children and you can provide a better family life. Guess what? Uh, you know, uh, or like in uh, England, you guys um, have those uh, um, uh, the, 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 what are those called? The electric sockets, and they have the little thing where you can actually turn the socket on and off on the actual socket, which is kind of cool. They don't have yeah. those here. You'll, you'll learn to live without it. I'm already living without it. I'm, I'm not in England at the minute, but uh, yeah, well. it took me a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm past it. So again, it's again, it's sort of like 
what's you, you go back to the point and when you start thinking about the point of what you're trying to do with this big move all this little stuff it kind of doesn't matter it really all just sort of melts away yeah the important yeah, thing so. here again is uh why you're coming here and it was something to really be concerned about is yes is got to get to russian to be able to get some kind of job because obviously you need to have an income that's a real problem that's a real uh p- problem that has to be solved is the whole like uh getting your russian to be able to start making money here that's that's a real legitimate yeah. problem that people have to be concerned about but like all this other stuff i'm i'm always amazed like uh, i've maybe told this kind of joke a few times but you know people are like tim i'm so afraid they're they're uh, that uh you know they're gonna take my kids away and they're gonna tell my son that he's a girl and cut his dick off okay uh, but then they're like well i don't know what are houses like in russia well generally they don't build houses with basements <laughs> no basement i'm not gonna live like that okay well then have your son's dick get cut off <laughs> Like, if you really, again, it goes to back to sort of also cognitive dissonance. Do people really believe what they're saying, or are they just kind of making it up in their mind, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, man, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to go to Daniel, because uh, Daniel has wanted to talk for a long time here. Hello, Daniel. What's going on? Hello. How are you? I'm fine, 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 fine. Uh, Tim, um, how many families do you need? for each location to to go forward with the project well to be honest if someone wouldn't mind uh one and one for each uh, one location one. i mean if one person says yes i want to move to russia um the government doesn't have to be super informed of all this stuff it's really just one for each okay. location and when can that family come to russia do they have to wait for the house to be finished or can they no, come earlier no, no, and no, no, start no. the they, process? They can come whenever, whenever, depending on their visas and all that. But they have to get the money by the 24th of February. I, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But and, they, could, uh, yeah they could come. Uh, of course, the house is going to take a few months. Uh, that's where you get into renting an apartment. But renting an apartment, especially if you think about it for like a three month or four month period or whatever, is not a whole lot of money, especially outside the city. Right. It's very cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they can start the process as soon as they get here. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's where that's where Timur comes in and getting all that stuff gotcha. done and being like, "Look, we're we're building this house, and all that other stuff. And uh, look, this is the American Village Project, and this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. Look, we're developing the country. We're bringing our ability to pay taxes and wealth here, and uh, give us the spot in the stupid quota, and they will. So, yeah. <clears throat> all right. And and real quick, just a comment for people who might not know know me but um i'm from long island new york i moved to russia to moscow 12 years ago i met my wife upstate new york she's russian and when our son was born in uh, 2010 i told her it's time to leave and and raise our children here and you know just listening to everyone's stories and questions and you know i couldn't imagine i could not imagine moving here without a job see my Mm. my wife's my wife's uh company moved us here as expats yeah so they did everything Mm -hmm. you know and and again this was 12 years ago so it was easy you know shipping stuff flying here getting that uh, english teaching certificate whatever it's called the selty or whatever the hell it is or tefl yeah 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 i i i took that before i left when my yeah. son was born and I knew we had about a year before we were leaving. So I did it before I left. But at the time, um, when we moved here, um, you know, my, my wife, uh, worked with JP Morgan chase and she was in investment banking. So I was kind of like a stay at home dad, Yeah. but I just want people to understand, you know, like, um, I didn't know, you know, my wife and I lived together for, for 11 years on long Island, but we never studied Russian. You know, our life was we left at seven in the morning. We came home at seven at night yeah. and uh, we didn't own the house. The house owned us. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have time to do anything during the week. So you have to do everything on the weekends. You know, that was our life. So, you know, people are like, oh, you have a Russian wife. Why don't you speak Russian? Yeah, well, <laughs> you get home at seven o'clock at night. You have time to do cook dinner, take care of the kids, go to sleep, you know, get up and do the rat race. But I just want people to understand, I, you know, I'm, I'm a successful english private english tutor now i have all kinds of students and parents are in all different types of industries um but it took me a while 
You know, I yeah, mean, if it you does. can you have find... to build up your sort of loyal clientele, uh, because a lot of people in the sort of like English speaking world can be flaky. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll send my kid over on Thursday, Thursday at four o'clock. Sure, sure, sure. And then the kid doesn't show up, you know? <clears throat> right. I mean, there are options for people if they want to try to get a job at a school and then yeah. the school will help them, you know, but just, you know, I couldn't imagine, Tim, I couldn't imagine moving here without one, a job or two being fluent in Russian, mm-hmm. you know, having or, or three, just having a shitload of money that I can live on for at least well, six months. Then I can tell you uh, what that's like, because my Russian level was still pretty bad when I got here, despite putting effort into it. And I didn't have a job lined up. And, yeah, it was tough. But, uh, you know. But, so I just want, I just want your, the people to understand, like, okay, if you have the money to build this house and if you have the money to, to live here for six months to learn the language and, and to get yourself a, a, a job or, you know, whatever you plan on doing, the mm-hmm. best thing to do is if you have a job and you can do it online remotely, you know, but uh, just just make sure you, you know you have enough money to mm-hmm. give you time you know give you time to get settled in because it, you're going to need time to get settled in, especially living in this. You know, I'm from Long Island. You know, the weather was beautiful, even in November, December. Oh, really? I'm yeah. still trying to get used to the winters here after 12 years, to be honest with you. And I know many Russians who live here don't even get, can't even get used to the winter because yeah. it's it's a glo- yeah. it's a gloomy, you know, so. I recommend, you know, like I'm popping vitamin D and magnesium before I go to bed every night. I don't skip a beat for like five months, you know, because mm-hmm. if you're low on vitamin D, you get very sad, oh, you get man. very Those depressed. Those magnesium you know? pills get expensive. Ugh, they used to be like well, ten times cheaper. But anyways, <laughs> but but I'm just saying, if you're coming from a hot climate, or if you're coming from even even a even like in winter time, you have sun and blue skies. It's it's not like that here. You well, don't get a lot of sun. In Siberia, it's sunny in winter. In Moscow, it is Yeah, Moscow, yeah. it's not. So you will have to get used to that. You yeah. definitely will have to get used to that. And uh, and what I do to get me through the winters is every night I'm taking vitamin D and I take it with magnesium because magnesium helps your, your body absorb the vitamin D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's what gets me through the winters because let me tell you, man, I, it's that's the, that's the only complaint that i have but i don't even complain about it why because my children are safe and uh you know they're in seventh class they're in fourth class they're in a public school and it's a wonderful let me tell you you don't have to put your kids in private school there are many many really good schools in russia i know because i have a lot of kids that live in the city and in the oblast And their parents, uh, if they have to drive them 20 minutes to a good public school or to another town, they do. But you don't have to spend the money. Well, if you're outside the city, a 20-minute drive is nothing, you know. You know, I know. I'm a teacher. I have a lot of colleagues. I've never once worked in a school. I would never work in in a... private school or an international school here just because it's not... It's just the people that you have to work with, unfortunately. But... I know, and I hear the horror stories. So my kids are in a public Russian school, and it's a very, very good school. We have actors, we have um, musicians, very famous people that their children go to this school. And it's in the city, it's in Moscow. And the education is, is great. If you can homeschool your children, well, that's the best. All right. And if guys, you if you want to learn more about Daniel's life, go to Moscow Settlers. That's how you find Daniel. And I'm going to let you go now, man. Thanks for chiming in. But, uh, yeah, uh, the winners do get longer every year, in my opinion, as you get older. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Manny now wants to talk. Manny, do you have some uh, questions here? Now you got to hit the button to allow yourself to talk. Nope, oh, I think you're here. Hello, Manny. Manny? I hear like some kind of shuffling and moving of papers and stuff. Manny, I think your microphone is actually on, but for some reason I can't hear you. I'm sorry, man. Uh, Going once, going twice, going thrice. 
sold. Sorry, Manny, something's wrong with your microphone. You just kind of turned it on, but I couldn't hear you. So anyways, uh, while we're waiting, maybe some other people want to uh, talk or whatever. Uh, I'd just like to remind you that uh, everyone has to, who really wants to do this, it's time, it's time to fill out the form. Uh, I'll make a post about this. I guess soon it'll be under all the videos. I was going to do this real soon, but I'm actually starting to get really tired. So, uh, yeah, or I'll, but it's on the, the Tim Kirby Russia hardcore group. I'll just fix the link or something real quick. But um, uh, anyways, for those who really want to go forward with this. So uh, let's see. Are there any questions? That requires me to open the thing with the thing and the other thing. Okay. Uh, Derek, I'm sorry I got in a few minutes late. I'm understanding that we only have three weeks to put on the down payment. I'm working on selling my property here in Texas, but before we have all the funds... Yeah, unfortunately, Derek, uh, it's three weeks. The, the construction company wants two weeks. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, three weeks. Uh, or otherwise, they're basically going to invest their money in other stuff. And see you next year. Uh, uh, the turbo autists nag, whine, and talk continually, but won't pull the trigger. Yeah, kind of. Well, again, of Christopher, you're talking about people who are very much, it's like, you know, well, I want, it's or, well, the usual thing. It's like well, someone who asked me, they were like, I want to own minimum five acres of land and I want to be able to drive to downtown uh, Moscow within an hour. It's like, okay, do you have $15 million? <laughs> like, that's not like possible. You know, you have to really think of the, 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 the there's, there's always going to be pluses and minuses. Uh, overall, one thing I can tell you is that people who are from the sort of, um, who are interested in this project, whether they're from the Anglo-Saxon countries where we speak English or whether they're Europeans who are interested in this, um, really, for the most part, no one wants to live. Well, first off, doing a project that is in the city would be impossible. It would just not be possible. But secondly, people really want to live in a suburban or rural environment. But at the same time, living in a suburban or rural environment does, you know, there's kind of less going on. Distances are bigger, you know, we're, we're in Russia, we're not in um, Switzerland, you know, so yeah, and sometimes the rural life can be a little slow, and the schools can be maybe a little bit less funded, you know, so it's something you got to think about. Anyways, Aaron is asking, Tim, one, how much gets built with 51% down? Uh, that would be, so you get, the, the land is, is paid for. Uh, they are going to then put down the foundation and all the walls and the roof and everything else is going to be completely empty on the inside. The 51% down uh, is, a, is, a, is a box that is not livable yet. It's not like a box where you can go in it and live. Uh, it is just the box, the walls and the roof and enough that the house won't be damaged by staying there. Um, you know, so it's essentially ready to be worked on further. But the land is definitely 100% paid for. That's the key thing. Does the process go directly to the temp residency request without first getting the tourist visa? Uh, no, you have to come here on some sort of visa. And this is where it comes to Timur. So Timur, my good friend and the number one um, immigration lawyer in Russia, he is the one who's going to handle all that. But you can really, uh, there is no way to attain, there just is no way to attain a temporary residency out being outside of the territory of the Russian Federation. It's just not possible. Okay. So you have to come on some sort of visa and then apply while you're here. Can we do temp residency with only half a house? Uh, I'm yes. From what I understand. Yes. And that's why we're allowing this whole 50% thing because the house is being built and um, you know, We'll, we'll have proof that the house is being built. We'll have the plot. We'll have the, the walls and all this other stuff that we can show the governor's staff that it's being built. And that should be good enough. Uh, so, yes, I would say uh, yes. For example, stay working in the U.S. for six. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could stay. Here's another thing. If you were to start, put down 50 percent, just get like this box that's for your future in Russia and you don't want to come now. That's fine. This this will all still be here unless I get shot tomorrow. This will all still be here and I'll be still set up, you know? So, yeah, you can do that. You can do it for the future. Um, also, could we do a temp residency application in the U.S. on our own? No, um, that's impossible. You have to be here. Why? Because the actual group that uh, manages that is the uh, police and the, the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Can I move money for people at for 2%? Uh, I can move money for 2% uh, via SWIFT. Well... Kevin, I mentioned certain people might be interested in helping out earlier in the uh, broadcast, and you might be one of them. I will milk the cow to completion tomorrow morning. All right, you do that. 
Dait is a fun word, and I love uh, the to say it politely, doitje, doitje karovo. Um, uh, Kevin, and note that the bigger issue is getting money out of a U.S. bank. I have a woman wanting to purchase here in Crimea, and her bank, Chase, has held her money up for 10 days for security checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, That's about Joe Rogan. Disconnected from reality is exactly right. The great Jacques Baud explained it very well in his latest book, from which an article is an excerpt. Okay, then there's no explanation. Just click on the link. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read the article while we're doing the live stream. That's too much reading. There's a rule. You can only read a certain amount. I would like to ask why the West doesn't like Stalin so much. That has nothing to do with this conversation. What's the guarantee of getting the quota? 100%, the governor guaranteed it. That's the whole point of this thing. He gave it to us in writing, and it's also uh, confirmed by the Rosa Trudicistva, if you know who that is. So, yes, that's the, again, that's the whole point of this thing. It's not if, it is. Visa is, the visa is easy. Well, visas, yeah, visas are easy to get. Visas pretty much get, getting out to everyone. The Russian police are tough. Yes, they are. What does that have to do with anything? Uh, thanks, Tim. Sure, Russian visas are easy to get. Someone says again. Yes, uh, yes, the tourist visas are still easy to get. Follow the instructions on the consulate or embassy of Russia in the uh, country where you are going to do that. Don't ask me. Uh, it's all written on their site, and you have to follow their rules, not my rules. So, And their rules sometimes change. So we have some American Village in Russia stuff. You pay 60%, but it sucks. What bad do that's having both access to European Union with tourists that come from any visas a tourist. I don't remember which country now I think they're countries that have no income taxes at all. Communist Eritrea and North Korea are the only other countries that make you do the same thing. Because you think we uh, have enough nuggets in the bank to survive. That's good. Okay, that's not really relevant to this. But that's okay. Uh, yeah. Does anyone else want to talk? Now would be a good time. So, uh, Anne wants to talk again. And, uh, yeah. So, Anne, hello, hello, hello again. Yes. So, so just a, a question. If someone were to buy it and then, including the house, and then things just didn't work out a year later or so, yeah. Can they can they sell it? You know, well, what I is the resale? Them selling it after five years. Why? Because if you sell after five years, you don't have to pay taxes on it on the sale. So if it doesn't work out, I would tell them to wait uh, for for that. So that way, they uh, basically get uh, they essentially make profit on it. Because after five years, uh, unless there's some sort of miracle that happens in the way that money works, um, with five years of inflation. Uh, you know, the basically the value of the house is going to exceed inflation and you're actually going to make money on it. Okay, and what are the taxes if it has to be before five years? Oh, man, it's something like in the first year, it's something like 30%. And then after that, it's like oh. 13 or more or something. Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. So essentially, all the people who I've bought stuff from, they've all owned that thing, their their you know property for a long time, so they didn't pay any taxes on anything I've ever bought. So awesome, thank all you. All right, there you go. So yeah, a flat in Moscow, which I can sell and use to fund them for the American Village. Are you familiar with the bank account S for unfriendly countries? What do you mean, bank account S? Spare bank for unfriendly countries? Anyone can open a spare bank account if they're physically present in Russia and they have a valid passport. Anyone can. So, yeah. We already have a flat in Moscow. How? It's like, dude, it's kind of cool that you're excited about maybe buying something outside the city, but if you already own a flat in Moscow, that means, like, are you... Why, what is your problem? Do you just want to live in this, like, community? Or are you... Or are you having an immigration issue? Like, it seems like your life here is kind of already set up. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't quite understand. Because, essentially, if you already have a flat, you've kind of already built a base of life here. Or do you just want to, like, do the whole community, like, thing? And, like, have neighbors and stuff? 
Is that the thing? So, again, it kind of goes back to what's your base motivation. So, but yeah. It also kind of depends on the apartment, but pretty much any apartment in Moscow is way more than, than a house outside the city right nowadays. Uh, so, follow-up question to the visa discussion. As long as we had the down payment on the house, could we apply for residence off of any type of visa, such as work visa? Now, I've encountered a little problem with this. In the past, it was always uh, uh, any type of visa that gets you in the country, be it tourist or whatever, you could apply. But recently in the Crimea, they've been telling people that, no, it has to be a homestay visa or private visa, as it's, I believe, more officially called. Uh, in and around the Moscow area, it should be any kind. But again, um, if you're going to do this in this project, this is why I need people to go to this um, thing, this form, and actually enter the form and say that they're going to do this, because then that's the, th the time when you can start contacting Timur and really ask him these specifics. But for the Moscow region, from what I understand, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I was, uh, when I made uh, the first jump, I was on a work visa. When I made the initial jump to temporary residency, it was a work visa. So, as an example of a different kind. Yes, this is what my issue was with the quota. Does this project guarantee the approval? Yes, again, that's the whole point. The governor said, and in writing, and, uh, so, you know, to our faces, uh, and to Rosetruchstva, who can really harass him, that yes, this whole American villages thing gets quota. Because of sanctions, persons from Ukraine can only sell property with permission from a ministry. So again, wait, on a tourist visa for... How, how have you been doing the tourist visa thing for 15 years, Manny? You applied 13 times for quota and didn't get it. Well, here's the first part. Manny, why aren't you married? I know that there's been this sort of new thing where it's like, well, you have to be married and now have a kid. Um, again, I'm not quite sure about those nuance, uh, nuances, but that just started like a year ago. Over these 15 years, why didn't you get married? Um, I don't know, man. Like, whew, that's rough. I, did you apply again? And also, did you apply for this quota like through, you know, immigration lawyers or people who have a little bit of a inside to know how to properly do this? Or did you do it by yourself? Like, who who did this? How can you possibly be here for 15 years on a tourist visa? And how can you have an apartment? Because to have an apartment, you had to make some decent bank. You know what I mean? To have, an, to have a Moscow apartment. Where did that come from? Uh, Manny continues, yeah, because of sanctions. So, I don't know. Having property doesn't guarantee to receive a quota. I paid cash for flats. Well, no. Having a, yeah, having a Moscow apartment does not guarantee anything. But the Moscow apartments are not part of a hype project. Let the signature from the what would be the governor be the mayor of Moscow. You see? Again, that goes back to the, what's the point? What's the point of this American village? It was to create a hype project that would allow people to get around uh, the immigration quota. So if we pay the box, uh, this is a different person, J.A. So if we pay for the box to pay 51%, will it guarantee my husband the approval? We just talked about that. Yes, I can immigrate him the other way. I have a, if you are, well, here's a th something. Will they tell him, no, we don't want to waste quota on you because I can... No, they won't tell him to waste quota because they won't... They, they're, remember, the, the Russian government is doesn't operate like a hive mind, okay? They're not like the Borg from Star Trek or the Tyranids from Warhammer 40K that have millions of entities all linked to one single mind. They don't know. Like, they don't think of things in those terms. They're, they're not going to put those two dots together. But again, here's the other question then, Jay, is like, okay. Again, so if you're, uh, here's the problem is now we have this new thing where I think you have to have a kid and be married. That doesn't make things more complicated. But like, before that new law came out, why aren't you here? Why didn't you just sort of do this on your own? And also, you're probably going to have a kid anyways if you're married and you're still young. So why not just have a kid? I, again, I don't quite get it. So yeah, the project could help him, but you kind of already have your own pathway set up for you. You know what I mean? 
Like you kind of have the immigration pathway. Or do you just want to live in a cool community and have a nice house outside the city? That's cool too. All right. But again, it's like going back to why are we doing this? What's the point? William wants to talk. Hello, William. Hello. Well, we have kids over 18, but they but they are Russian. So excuse me, William. Hold on, William. Before you start talking, I'm going to mute you briefly. We'll get back to you. So so she says that she's married and she has two kids who are, I guess, then Russian citizens. So yeah, you don't, then if you have that, and of course you have proof that they're your kids, then you already have the golden ticket for your husband to live in Russia. If you just think Easter's cool, that's awesome. Please <laughs> spend money on this project. But you already have the golden path laid out right in front of you. Again, William, okay, here you're back. William, hello. Yeah, um, I just wanted to confirm something that I heard in the past. Um, so um, when you put money in a Russian bank, um, you're basically committed, right? In the sense that um, if something doesn't work out and you need to leave Russia, yeah. you're not going to be able to take that money with you. Well, of course, it's it's a real pain to get money here and it's even more of a pain to get it out, yeah. Okay. Especially in dollars. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that. That was that was really all I yeah, had to fact, ask. Yeah, in fact, there was recently, someone was even asking me, they were like, uh, Tim, um, I have a friend and he's he wants to exchange money for dollars badly and he's willing to pay like a terrible rate just to get dollars. I'm like, I don't have a dollar reserve, but thank you for thinking I do. <laughs> thank you for thinking I'm rich, but no, I'm not. So yeah, it is really <laughs> tough to get uh, dollars and euros now in Russia. Selling them is easy. Getting them is incredibly difficult. All right. Okay. So yeah. But even regardless, it, it, even even before the whole war and all this nonsense, it is, Russia was always really a one-way street. It really was. Okay, Christopher is back and wants to add something. Hello? Hello. Yes, hello again. Um, yes, uh, I have a, a friend who was telling me, and I, I, uh, I don't know, multiple people alluded to, Part of the law with a registration um, system where it's possible for the uh, children to actually, well, they're, they're, it's not the same concept of home ownership. Um, that um, the whole family owns it, and that in theory, if the children disagree with the parent, uh, that they can take the house away from the parent. Okay. And then I, part of it's like. Hold on. What you're referring to is. Uh, what they call that that like maternity capital that uh when, that are paid to the parents uh, who have uh, children of like after you have your like second kid and so on and so forth you get more and more maternity capital that is in relation to that program that has nothing to do with pure capitalism uh, perhaps perhaps this is how it was in Soviet times, or maybe this is some isolated, like, apartment situation. Well, of course, in the Soviet times, they had to guarantee that everyone had a place to live. So in the Soviet Union, again, where do these questions come from? But I'll answer it anyways. So in the Soviet Union, because they had to guarantee where everyone lived, so, that, so registration meant a lot. If anyone was registered at a place, that meant that you couldn't sell it, okay? Because that would make the people homeless. What can happen in modern Russia is if there are children registered at a place, you can't sell it. They have to be registered somewhere because children can't essentially be homeless because they can't. They have to be guaranteed somewhere. OK, so technically, yes, but that's a real easy hurdle to get over in modern Russia. It isn't like the Soviet Union, you know. Uh, then when they're adults, though, they they're, so it's not likely that when they're adults, they'll try to seize the house from the parents, and there's no real ownership. There's no problem. mechanism to seize the house. Okay. There was no in the Soviet okay. Union. There was no mechanism. Everyone had to be somewhere. Okay? I think it's that that a parent couldn't just sell the house themselves. That the children had to agree, or they couldn't sell it. Everyone who was permanently registered at that location during the Soviet Union, and especially like the early part of the Yeltsin period, everyone who was permanently registered there be they a relative or not, had a say in whether the place would be sold or given away. And they all had to agree with it unanimously. Or or, this or is no register way. themselves yes. somewhere else. But that's history. But this that, is no problem. Why, why, uh, why, dude, why are you worried about something that happened in the 1970s? I'm glad to have that, that dispelled. Forgive me. Old Russians talk nonsense. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they're full of shit, and that's why they're still Sorry. Why, That's why many landlords won't give you even temporary residency be, or res yeah, temporary yeah, registration yeah. because they're used to the old system, even though uh, that system's been dead for over 30 years. So It's been very informative. You've done a great job. I, I think it's a great opportunity. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, I know all about this stuff, man. All right. Talk to you later. But, uh, yeah, so in, in general, yeah, that's uh, not really a problem. But when it comes to the maternity capital program, yes, then the children, um, actually, the that apartment, uh, if you buy an apartment with that money, uh, it is sort of collectively belongs to everyone in the family, and it does behave more like in the Soviet Union. But obviously that program is really not something you're going to be concerned about as foreign people. So don't worry about that. Uh, yeah. In fact, I never actually got the chance to use it for my kids. Eventually, uh, when I pay off, when I make uh, Fort, Ch uh, Fort Kirby and Chekhov nicer, and when I eventually pay off the apartment I bought downtown, I need to just buy some junker so that way the kids get their, you know, maternity capital money or something. I don't know. Have to use that eventually. Uh, okay, some people wrote questions. So you can call in if you want, and we'll get to written questions. Uh, more visa questions. Uh, if we put down, if we put the payment down and fill out the form, does access to Timur get us help with the tourist visas to get us initially to Russia? You have to talk to Timur about that, and you're going to have to pay for that because that again is his time and his effort. Uh, about the tourist visa thing, uh, uh you know, if you're going to do this, uh, and you really won't even want help with the tourist visas, yeah, you, that's uh, that has to be Timur, and that's another reason why. Uh, the payment for the house and all that stuff is separate for the payment for two more services because they're separate entities and I can't help you with that. It is a very clean region. We live in San Diego and we are U.S. citizens and Swedish, maybe Swedish, and kids have Russian passports. But me, they are 32 and 25. Well, that still counts. Yes, the whole idea is to live in Istra. It is a very clean region. I have friends who live nearby. It is very clean and very pretty. Uh, I, I, won't, I won't argue on that one. Also, please let us know more about how the bank account works. My husband is traveling to Moscow in April. About the bank account, well, to establish a Russian bank account, um, all you need to do is you have to have your passport, maybe translated, that depends on the bank. Uh, translating a passport doesn't cost much. And um, and yourself, and you go to the bank and you do it. You might need someone who speaks Russian to help you. But that's it. And you can open a foreign account. Put some money in it, and it'll be good to go for years. Um... My husband is traveling to Moscow in April. Should we open it in rubles or dollars? Uh, like I said, it is really hard to get dollars anymore. So essentially, you have no choice but to open it in rubles now. So it'll be a ruble account. Any dollars you put into it get turned into rubles immediately. It does not apply to the present law nowadays. Registration in uh, the USSR and now is different. I know that for sure. I have a law degree from both countries. The ownership and registration are different. Yes, yes, they are. They've become different over time because now we have capitalism, baby, and everything is different. Um, so, But uh, the legacy of the USSR lives on, and that's why the whole thing with uh, if there are children uh, registered at a place, it can't be sold until the children go somewhere else. Okay, that's sort of pos one of the uh, positive sides of uh, communism. There are a few. Um, although the longer you live here, the less you see them, <laughs> but that's definitely one. So no homeless children uh, in theory. Um, bu 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 but remember, how do we make sure that there's no homeless children? Bureaucracy. Oh, baby. That's, that's the communist solution. Everything more paperwork. Um, but yeah, so it looks like we're running out of questions. I am running out of steam. I've been doing for an hour and 40 minutes. If you have a last question, now would be the time to ask. Now would be the reason to raise your hand because I am kind of mentally and physically exhausted. And one person has like a ducky as their icon. That is very cute. Who doesn't like a nice ducky? I guess that's it. So this was our sort of gigantic um, live stream. Unfortunately, my brains are a bit scrambled, so we normally I have a good ending for these live streams. Today, I really don't. So we're just going to kind of... Oh, we do have a question. Um, but, 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 is it okay to buy and rent the rent out the property? Well, you get in the problem, Manny, is that that's when you definitely have to get. Uh, you go through your temporary residency, and then you go to permanent residency. When you have permanent residency, you can do everything like a Russian does, and that's when you can start to rent stuff out. It's when you have permanent residency, so you'd have to wait. You know, like was it a year? Uh, if you absolutely mass rush it, it's something works out to be like a year and a half or something. So, um, 
yeah so you'd have to wait but and then then at that point you can rent stuff out like uh yeah uh, of course there are a lot of people in russia who don't really file taxes on the stuff they rent out so <laughs> if you're willing to dodge the tax authorities and there you go so uh someone else wants to type but i don't think they're willing to press the button to allow them to type no 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 the button is too complicated uh, so anyways friends oh my gosh i minimized everything no how could i do that so anyways guys i'm gonna hit the road it was great to seeing you hopefully this was informative uh if you really want to do this fill out the form fill out the form it'll be in the description of this video or in the um uh, the, the group for the american village official